Alright, just an ad hoc video regarding Y Finance. They made a couple of changes to their library in specific in the most recent version and people are going crazy. I received numerous messages slash complaints about how this library isn't working anymore. So I thought I'm just doing a quick video to show how the new library is working and what are the key changes. In general, they are just two very simple changes and I'm going to showcase them to you. There is a data structure change, but also a data design change. So first of all, the most recent version of Y Finance is 0.2.51. It was published in December 2024, so just a couple of weeks ago. It doesn't matter if your version is 0.29 or whatsoever, this is the most recent version. If you pull data with this version, it will look slightly different. So let's start by pulling data for Apple starting in 2024. So what do we get? We get a data frame with a multi-index column. That was not the case before. Before, you just had a column containing open, high, low, close, adjusted close and volume. Now you see, you don't have an adjusted close value anymore. We'll get to that in some minutes. But before that, I want to talk about the structural thing. So you see you have a multi-index column now. So how do you cope with that? Most people just want to flatten out the columns. And to flatten out the columns, so flatten out means you want to reduce the levels. So this is a two level index and you want to get a one level index. There are multiple ways to do that. A pretty easy one and also a fancy one because not many people know this function from pandas is using the cross section function. Then you provide what you want to pull and you define the level. So let's say I want to pull the apple ticker, define the axis and define the level as ticker. With that, I would get all level values for the apple ticker. So you see, when I'm executing that, you see that you have a flattened column index. So you only have one level here. So you could just reassign that and then work with the data frame as you're used to it when pulling uh, one or data for one stock. Works also if you pull multiple assets here. So if you pull Apple and let's say Tesla, and then you pull the data frame, you see that you get a multi-index, otherwise you couldn't show the data. Well, you can, but it would uh, not be lucid anymore. So you have close, high, low, open here. And then you have Apple, Tesla, Apple, Tesla, Apple, Tesla, and so on. Then if you pull cross section now again, and only want to see Apple on the ticker level, this will look like this. So with that, you have an Apple data frame. You could also pull that for Tesla. You get the Tesla data and so on. So this is the first simple thing which Y Finance changed. Now, the more significant change. And I think that's a very nice change, but you have to get used to it and understand what exactly and how they changed it. And that is they now only take close, high, low, open and volume. But where's the adjusted close? And why are those values here different as they are before? Because all of those values are now adjusted by e.g. stock splits and dividends. Dividends, yeah, nice word. Dividends, of course. So you adjust all the values here by the adjustment factor. You can avoid that if you don't want to have it like this by defining an additional argument in the data pool. That is, and now let's just keep it simple and just pull for Apple. And then let's take a look at the data frame again, just that you see what we have here. So close, high, low, open. And if you define auto adjust as false, 
you will get, and let's just pull the data frame buff here so we can compare, you will get the old data frame adjusted, close, close, high, low, open, which you're used to, right? And now all these values are different from these values here. And that is simply because those values are getting adjusted. So let's go over one example. So we have Apple on the 2nd of January. We have a close price and we have an adjusted close price, adjusted for stock splits, dividends, and so on. So the adjustment factor here would be the close price in relation to the adjusted close price. So if you multiply the close price with this factor, you will get the adjusted close, right? This just simply the factor. So if you take this one and then multiply it by this one, you will get the adjusted close value here. Simple as that. Now, how the new data pool is working or how it's now structured is it is also adjusting the open, high, low values. So as an example, this value will also be adjusted by this factor. So if you multiply that, you are getting 187.5213 something. Now this will be the high price in the auto adjusted data frame. So the second one here, and you see the high price is now going to be 187.521 and so on. And the same is true for the low and so the open. So by default, Y Finance is auto adjusting all those values. And I think that's a good one because otherwise if you have an adjusted close price and you compare it with an open price, for, in, for instance, just as use case to avoid a forward looking bias and only buy on the next day's open, and you work on the adjusted close price, you always have a misleading results because the open price before didn't get adjusted. So I think that's a good change. And these two key changes, so data structure wise and the adjustment are just the simple changes. And I hope this video helped you to deal with those changes. Thanks a lot for watching.